All right, amazing hackers. Let's continue with analyzing JavaScript, shall we? First of all, we need to talk about what they are. That's really important. And then what secrets they hold. Oh, that's really freaking cool. And then the attack strategy, of course, and some defense mechanisms against our attack strategy as well. First of all, let's talk about what JavaScript actually are. So JavaScript is a language that was designed to operate on the client side and it's object oriented a whole bunch of baloney what you need to know is that it runs on the computer of your target not the web server so that's really important and it serves a purpose to make static websites dynamically you can for example make a change to a website without reloading it fully and that's really useful or you can add dynamic elements like animations and all that kind of stuff now there are some really cool secrets hidden in those JavaScript files sometimes. And then I'm talking about things like new endpoints, hidden parameters, API keys, you know, the cool stuff, passwords, secrets, environment variables, all of the cool stuff, but also HTML and JavaScript things, which a lot of people seem to forget about. But those are some really cool places that we can look for cross-site scripting into. And there are also some potentially dangerous areas, of course, it's like, for example, the eval functionality, dangerous set in, in HTML, all that kind of stuff. We can look for all of that in the JavaScript file. So there are quite a lot of things to find, of course, but how do you find them? Well, first of all, we need to grab our JavaScript files. That's, of course, obvious. Um, we need to know where they are. Um, and then we can do some manual analysis on it. Now you can, of course, run some tools as well. Those tools are going to be Link Finder and Secret Finder. I love those tools, don't get me wrong, but I think it's more important that you learn to analyze JavaScript manually. Static code review is going to be very important about this. And of course you can run your JavaScript as well and do a little bit of dynamic analysis, but it's going to be super important that you're going to be able to do manual analysis and not just look at tools. Because what Secret Finder and Link Finder are going to do, if we go back to our list, they're going to show us new endpoints and possibly new parameters, maybe some API keys and some secrets and passwords, but in no way are they going to show us business logic like for example, calculation of coupon codes. That kind of stuff can be all set in JavaScript and can be totally missed by those tools. So highly recommend that you go through your JavaScript manually as well. Now, you first need to grab them, of course. We can do that by clicking through our application, having burp open in the background. And then we can go to our target tab and our sitemap tab. And in here, if we click this filter box at the top, you're going to see a filter by MIME type, or you can filter by file extension. And then you can, of course, see all of those JavaScript files. You can right click it, you can export it. But if you have Burp Suite Pro, you can also right click on your target directly and click on the engagement tools where you can find the scripts. Of course, this is going to be scripts that you have browsed through. So you need to still explore your application manually. It's very important. You can also use Wayback Machine. We have tools for this one as well. This one I do recommend that you use tools for. You can go through this manually as well, of course, but this is very simple. What we're basically going to do is go to use the Wayback URLs tool, we install it with the go get command. If you don't have go installed on your computer, especially on Windows, it's really, really easy to do that. So, um, and then we can grab for the JavaScript files specifically. Now, when we have those JavaScript, again, we're just going to have to do our manual analysis, read the JavaScript. So that's why I think it's super, super important that you're very proficient at JavaScript not just at the usability level, but that you know which the dangerous functions are to look for and that you know which business logic you're looking for. Now, it's also very important that you're really good at JavaScript because of the following things. Now, the JavaScript minification is going to be when you compress your JavaScript down by, for example, removing all the white spaces like space, like enter. You can remove all of those and it's going to look very, very compressed 
very, very small. It's not a specific defense mechanism against hackers. It's usually used to save some space. But of course, it can be very annoying, but we can decompress those easily. There are tools available online for us, luckily. There's also JavaScript obfuscation that's going to be a little bit more difficult because there is no one-size-fits-all solution. This is very important to know. Um, you're going to have to do this manually. You're going to have to look up some obfuscation techniques. There are several. Uh, one example that I can think of, and let me grab my pen here real quick so I can show you guys. So say, for example, you are testing your JavaScript and your JavaScript, you need to obfuscate it. So you have this function show users. So what they will do often is if you have this function, they will put the specific string for that function. So this show me, they will put that into an array and then they will say array one equals and then on that location, you're going to have a new show user string. And then instead of getting the show user as your string to call upon your function, you're going to grab the array value at position zero. Well, array one in this case. And then you're going to execute the function in that way. So that's a possible obfuscation technique. There are dozens of obfuscation techniques that you can do. You can split up these arrays. You can have multiple of them. You can split up the strings in the arrays. You can do a lot of stuff with this. You can put your variables into arrays like this. You can make it very, very obfuscated. Of course, as a developer, if you're going to obfuscate your JavaScript code, you should be very aware that it's going to take extra processing power to decompile, to de-obfuscate. So be aware of that. It might take a little bit longer. It shouldn't be that bad, but on older computers, it might present with a little bit of trouble. Now, one other thing that they can do is if you have one big JavaScript file, they might chunk it up into several smaller pieces. And it's really, really annoying because they scatter all of the functionality all over these different chunks. And you're going to have to paste it together a little bit for yourself. Again, manual is the way to go here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You're going to have to do a lot of stuff manually. You're going to have to learn JavaScript, which is unfortunately out of the scope of this video. But if you do, it's going to be so rewarding. You're going to enter a gold mine and it's freaking amazing. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye, amazing hacker.